Welcome back to the Michael Brooks Show. Joining us now is friend of show, Ronan Burton Shaw. He is the editor of Tribune Magazine. Ronan, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks for having me on, Mike. So, Ronan, we're sort of taking in the last 10 years um, this wave of what looked like some pretty significant opportunities from Syriza to Bernie Sanders. Um, we're in a moment now, uh, in no way, I mean, these ongoing Black Lives Matter demonstrations in the United States internationally are obviously focusing on enormously important issues. We'll see which way they go, uh, whether we're taking on serious substantive uh, reforms or is just sort of, you know, the, the corporate diversion into kind of HR politics, uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, but that being said, outside of that, we've seen a, seen a kind of string of defeats for this sort of modern resurgence of social democracy in the kind of Western zone. Yeah, I mean, look, my understanding of this last 10 years was that it was the beginning of a long cycle. If you think of what happened in the 1980s and the 1990s, the tide really went a very long way out. And we're not just talking about the defeats that were suffered, the neoliberal victory, the defeat of social democracy, the fall of the, uh, the communist states and so on, all of which had deep and profound impacts on left. Uh, but it was the fact that on our own side, the horizon, the political horizon was limited. So the third way project it was called Clinton in the United States or Blair in Britain or Schroeder in Germany. It was all about making the left buy into the fundamentals of the neoliberal settlement, the idea that the economy would continue to be run by the market, that basically we would have to uh, give over the fundamental decisions uh, of our society to the capitalist class. And the role of the left was only to mitigate that, to do a little bit of redistribution, um, to, to maybe uh, you know redistribute some of the growth uh, more towards working people than would be the case under a right-wing government. And so that massively limited the political imagination of a whole generation. And in many respects, it's the generation that now are backing centrist figures, are backing the you know, Starmer and the Labour Party are backing Biden against Bernie Sanders in the United States. Uh, it, these people who, when, when faced with enormous political changes around them, still have incredibly limited political imaginations about what is possible uh, and therefore act as a kind of, a, as a, as a rearguard uh, for the status quo in, in, in political and economic terms. And so, you know, that was the generation produced by the 80s and, and the 90s. The tide went a huge way out. And then with the 2008 crash, that whole moment of, of history, what of course, you know, Fukuyama and that cliched uh, way it called the end of history, it itself came to an end. And we got a new political moment opened up by uh, the failure of the economic model produced by Thatcherism, Reaganism, the finance-led growth model, um, which was so structuring to the entire Western economy for decades, uh, collapsed in and itself uh, in 2008. And it produced new openings, new spaces for uh, alternative, uh, alternative uh, movements, for anti-system movements, anti-establishment movements, um, and for a renewed uh, left-wing uh, project in very many countries. And, and for the last decade, we've been kind of living in the space that 2008, uh, 9, 10 opened up for us. And what do you think the main factors are in, in sort of the reversal of this push. Um, and let me just stipulate that obviously there's huge structural barriers. I mean, you cannot understand what happened to Bernie Sanders or Jeremy Corbyn without understanding the just vicious war that was waged against them by both, uh, in both cases, the media uh, and the party sort of apparatus. Um, particularly of the Labour Party, but certainly, I mean, I, I think we would have seen a very similar dynamic if Bernie had actually earned the nomination in terms of people with actual leadership positions actively undermining the campaign of their party. So, and, and then of course in Syriza, you know, the whole European architecture is coming down on them. But that being said, I mean, we do need to discuss those things and we should because those are you know, the main sorts of action in terms of what we need to overcome. But uh, what was within 
you think the control of these movements uh, and these parties and these leaders that they didn't they didn't take advantage of or they didn't respond to uh, strategically? I think it comes down to the fact that we started from such a low point. And in each and every country, there were different responses to how to overcome the limitations of the left. But you, you have to understand that we started from a period of extremely weak trade union movements, uh, in many cases, weak or barely existing socialist political parties. And then ideologically, we had lost enormous battles through the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, which figures like Bernie and Corbyn were only beginning to, uh, to turn around. They were only beginning uh, to plant the seeds of a different kind of ideological uh, perspective. So we, we all started from a very, very low point. It's not to forgive us our sins of, uh, of, the, of recent years and, and, and you know things could have ended up better. But it's worth, I think, going through and remembering what, uh, what we started with. So, you know, you come in in, in 2010, uh, really, and you get these moments of the Troika in, in uh, Europe and the imposition of austerity um, and the start of kind of popular sentiment against that. Um, in 2011, you've got the movements of the squares, the Indignados in Spain, in Thomas Square in Greece. You've got Occupy Wall Street in, in, the, in the United States. Um, and th that whole kind of political moment uh, was built on the detritus of the alter globalization uh, uh, movements, which were, you know, what the left could produce in the extremely uh, fallow years of the 90s and early 2000s. They had some strengths, but they had enormous weaknesses. Those of you who were involved in Occupy in the US will know all about this, the emphasis on horizontal capitalism on uh, you know decision made being made by consensus and probably crucially the anti-politics orientation this idea that we're neither left nor right we're not going to be involved in political parties we're not going to be involved in the political system we're going to be completely outside of all this some kind of pure space uh, that doesn't uh, involve itself in any of the real dilemmas of a political action uh, and you know those were extraordinary weaknesses and those were the uh, the dominant ideological positions of the left at the beginning of this whole cycle so to think we ha we came from there to where we ended up from like very marginal ideas where socialism if you mentioned it in the 2010 11 12 was just off the map completely it's when i got into the left and it was extremely small space uh, to call yourself a socialist and be taken at all remotely seriously and um, to the point at the end of the, the decade where we've got major you know viable figures to lead uh, some of the biggest capitalist states in the world who define themselves as socialists and who lead movements of people who are calling themselves socialists and crucially we're representing a program uh, within the you know the electoral political sphere but on, on the ideological question it's worth saying as well that different movements within the last decade came up with different ways of um, adjusting to the challenges that we faced. The first big one to break through was in two elections in 2012 was Syriza. Syriza grew in the May 2012 elections and then in the June one shot up again. It came from a party of about five or six percent to one of 22, 23 percent. And all of a sudden it became a vi viable vehicle for, for taking political power through um, uh, the election. Electoral, the electoral route. And that, you know, did two things. One, it sent all this generation who'd been radicalized by the movements of the squares and Occupy or whatever else towards um, left-wing politics and the idea that you could do something through the radical left. Uh, and it also opened up the question of, um, you know, uh, electoralism and well, what are we going to do about elections after such a long time when they were considered to be just not useful for the left. Um, but Syriza came from a very specific formation. It was a a, a, a new left party. It, it attempted to be a party of the movements. You could see it in its flag where it had you know, the red, the purple, the green. Um, it was, the again, coming out of some of that kind of early 2000s idea of, well, how do we um, produce a, a viable left? We simply stitched together all the existing movements without necessarily anything cohering them uh, in terms of an ideological position, certainly not in terms of the centrality of class politics or anything like that, but we're just going to try and stitch together all these movements. And on, one, on the one hand, for Syriza, that was a success because it produced a vehicle that could catapult itself towards power very quickly. But once it was in power, we saw the limits, that it was an incoherent project which had not 
asked itself enough about the structural limitations that it was going to face in the state against capital, against the European Union, that it, it had been too much a kind of temporary and conditional alliance of different social forces and too little a worked out political project aiming at taking state power. So that was, that was you know, an example of one of the, the uh, movements that achieved something because it, a series out of all of these movements actually won an election and managed yeah. to govern and did it for a period of time from a relatively left position would collapse within six months. Um, and that's an indication of why, because it started from a, an incredibly low base, like all of the left in the, in the West. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.